Hi, I'm Carol Peugeot, and I'm from Innovate Training, and this is From the Classroom to the Kitchen Nook. And guess what session we're on? We are on session 20. We have made it through 20 episodes, and we hope to see many, many more. Well, today, what are we going to talk about? Today, we're going to talk about mind mapping, or mind maps. It's a tool that we use for taking notes, whether in classroom, in a lecture, or in a planning session on the job, or in a meeting where you have to take minutes. It's a diagram that is used to visually organize information. It demonstrates hierarchy as well as relationship between pieces of a whole. Mind maps can be drawn by hand, or they can be as part of your notes or they can be done with software or an app. You can either have the software available on a website or you can download or purchase the software. Uh, most likely you're going to be able to find it on a, uh, on, a, um, on a website. And actually I'm going to leave some links down below in the information section where you can access some of these mind maps. All right, so what does mind mapping do for us? Well, it's been suggested that mind mapping can improve learning and studying um, the efficiency of that by as much as 15%. Actually, I believe it's more, but 15%, okay, that's the number they want to give, <laughs> over conventional note-taking. And that's really going to depend on the type of learner you are, the learning style that is your preference. Um, we talked about this some time ago about the different learning styles. If you're a visual or kinesthetic learner, then this will probably be one that you're going to enjoy because the visual will help, again, visually break down the information into segments that are easy to understand and easy to make sense of. Um, they're also referred to as graphic organizers. A graphic organizer is a graphic or visual display that depicts a relationship between facts, terms, or ideas within a learning task. So same thing, just um, different terms. Other things, it's referred to as other things as well, such as knowledge maps, concept maps, storyboarding, you probably heard that one, or story mapping, cognitive organizers, or concept diagrams. Again, all basically the same thing. Sometimes some of them are a little bit more specialized than others. Um, there are many different types of mind maps or graphic organizers. We have the persuasion map, which is what we're going to talk about today. We have the fishbone diagram. We have the lotus diagram. We have a Venn diagram. You've probably used that one or heard of it before. Um, today, again, we're going to talk about the persuasion graph or pers persuasion map. This is the, ability to, is the ability to break down an argument. Or I want to say an argument because we think argument as more of a fight. But argument meaning that you're trying to persuade to your point. When you are writing a paper, an essay, or a thesis, then you are trying to persuade your reader to a certain point. Um, the ability to persuade others is a powerful aspect, and the more powerful your paper or your argument is, the better it is that you do on that paper. We can persuade others to act in, in our favor, to help them to see our point of view and to sway their opinion to that of our own. That could be good, used for good or used for bad, but you're going to use it for good. Persuasion is a technique that helps students formulate ideas for persuasion, persuasive arguments by helping them to determine their goal or thesis and identify three reasons or concepts to support that idea. And then within each one of those 
ideas or reasons, you're going to provide three either supports or examples to help further support your statement. And this map or this, this mind map will help you to organize that information. Um, it's actually a really simple tool and I used it in all through high school, all through college and graduate school. It's really an effective way of getting started when you're writing your paper. Um, I, like to, I like to compare it to a runner um, who uses the starting block to kick off and gain speed. This is a writer's tool that they could kick off and gain that momentum in their writing. So it's a really good tool and it again it helped me. So I, I think it will be effective for you. Okay, so the persuasive organizer, it looks like this. It has on your left you see your main goal or your main point that you're trying to um, that you're trying to bring across. And then from there, it breaks off into three different reasons. Three reasons why you think this or why you're trying to break, bring this point across. And then from there, you notice that the three different reasons are broken down into three different, or three different examples or three different further um, examples or um, reasons. Okay, so you start with a goal or a thesis. It's a statement that describes one side of an arguable viewpoint. Um, and then you would write your thesis or your goal there. So for instance, uh, recycling is an effective way of reusing uh, un uh, unrenewable materials. And then from there, that is actually a point that there are t different views on nowadays. So it used to be recycling always good. Well, nowadays they're, they um, have realized that all the energy it takes into recycling isn't necessarily saving resources. So bring your argument on this side, or if you wanted to argue it against it, you would you would, you would bring a thesis as to recycling isn't as efficient as it once was thought to be. So then, now you have to give your main reason. Briefly state three reasons why you think this. Whether you think it's good or whether you think it's bad. And then you would want to, from there, bring three facts or three examples for each one. It's a model for creating a, a, a paper or a composition, or even a paragraph. And then, of course, after that, then you bring a conclusion. So the way a conclusion works, you bring your thesis statement, and you reword it, bringing out some of the proofs that you have just opened up or you just, that you just presented, and you restate it using that information. And that is a persuasion organizer. Okay, so we just got through talking about a persuasion map. In future lessons, we're going to talk about some more graphic organizers, our mind maps, we're going to talk about the fishbone diagram. The fishbone diagram is an effective tool that's used for cause and effect. I'm going to show you some examples. One of them is um, not being able to meet a deadline. So what causes it and the effect is going over the deadline. The other one is bad burgers. Having hamburgers that don't taste too well. So a restaurant is going to go through some of their uh, reasons why the burgers aren't tasting so well. So you'll see a fish diagram used in that example. And then there's a lotus diagram. 
which is uh, one that I'm actually using myself. And I'm part of a uh, mystery, uh, it's a game where you try to solve a murder. And so I'm using it to map out the different suspects. And so I'll use this during that lesson to show you how I'm using it to um, de describe my suspects and why I suspect them and why maybe they could be ruled out. And then there's a Venn diagram, which is someone you've probably seen quite a few of these. They're used quite often. And this demonstrates relationships of concepts or facts. Like, for instance, a dog and a cat. Well, both of them are mammals, both of them are meat eaters, so you'd have two circles where one side would say the dog, one side would say the cat. In the middle, they meet, and that's where they'd be both mammals and both pets and both meat eaters. You'll see, I'll, I'll explain how that works um, when we get to that lessons. So, this is Carol Peugeot from Innovate Training. This is From the Classroom to the Kitchen Nook, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hi, this is Carol Peugeot, and don't forget to subscribe, to like, and to hit that bell because we got a lot of good stuff coming. All right, see you next time.